Welcome into Man vs. Machine, where we bring in Ed Fang, one of the smartest guys in the business, has a degree from Rice, a PhD from Stanford, and we put him up against it, myself, a mere mortal with an SEC degree. So, uh, Ed, let's waste no time, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Do not discount your SEC degree. <laughs> um, and uh, let's, let's, let's crank through it, man. All right, bro. Let's... Uh, Let's see, last week you went two and one. You won on Baylor. We gave you the extra half hook in Portland Did you? shop around. Yeah. Hey man, thanks dude. I like it. I actually really think that was a pretty good play, um, but I did need the extra half point to call that a win. So I appreciate it, Drew Martin. Yeah, I mean, we can't, I, I guess, you know, we took Bovada lines, they're on SBR odds. So we got that. I pushed on that. I took the minus 14, which was pretty much across the board when we were filming. So you got Definitely. the win, I got the push. You won um, on Texas State. I lost on App State. You were absolutely right on that one. How'd you see that one playing out? Well, you know, I just didn't expect Texas State to be the worst team in FBS again. And that game actually has a huge effect on one of the games we're going to talk about this week. So I'm excited to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm pumping the brakes on App State. I don't think that, uh, well, I don't, I, I'm not so sure they're the same App State that they were last year. And then we had uh, Troy, New Mexico State. And this is the one I got you, finally. Um, looks like New Mexico State, that back door was open. So, yeah, how'd you feel it about was. that one? You know, I actually got to see a bunch of that game. Um, Troy's defense didn't really look as good as I expected to. But, I mean, as you said last week on the show, New Mexico State can really move the ball. They have a really potent offense. Yeah, no, and, and that's what happened in Las Cruces. It's always a tough trip for these uh, Sunbelt teams to go to. Las Cruces Absolutely. to play New Mexico State and also Idaho there in Moscow. So, hey, let's get into this week. 3-3-3, 3-3-4. We got the UCF Golden Knights traveling to College Park, Maryland. Take on the Terrapins. We got minus three and a half pretty much across the board at SBR odds right now, Ed. 59 and a half the total at Chris. Which way are you looking to bet this one? I like this Maryland team. Uh, I actually liked them last year when DJ Durkin took over. They came into the big house and uh, played Michigan. I was actually at the game. Um, the result wasn't particularly good for Maryland, but you could tell that they were doing something on offense. Um, they looked explosive on offense. They had a couple guys. They have a couple running backs that are explosive. Uh, they were running kind of these stretch plays to the outside. That you know, they actually got Mich a pretty good Michigan team um, on uh, a pretty good Michigan defense. They were actually able to to run some plays on them. Um, I like Maryland. They look good against Texas, uh, a team that, you know, looked back to being Texas in a game against USC uh, this past Saturday. Um, and we don't really know much about UCF at this point. I think they do have potential, um, but their offense was really bad last year. Uh, we need to kind of see some improvement and not just against the Florida International. So I'm going to go with, uh, with Maryland on the side in this game. And does the, I guess, backup quarterback in for the, for the Terps scare you at all? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it does. You know, uh, you know, their starter played pretty well against Texas, got hurt, is out for the season. They got a freshman, Krim Hill. Um, you know, he looked the part against Towson, but it's Towson. Uh, I definitely think there's room for worry there. Uh, but I think the real strength of the Maryland team is how they run the ball. Uh, good offensive line, a lot of those guys back, and two running backs that are pretty speedy. And so I think. Um, goes against one of my core tenants because I really do believe passing is way more important than, uh, than rushing in, in college football. But I think Maryland's, uh, yeah, the quarterback gives me a worry, but I still think that we're going to be able to get it done. Okay, I'll take the other side. I like the UCF Knights. I've been high on them all year. Uh, Scott Frost and company. I know what you're saying about Maryland, especially offensively with Walt Bell as their OC coming over from Arkansas State, what he was able to do with Freddie Knighton. And, and the, their starting quarterback going into the year, more of a dual threat guy, their backup. To tell you the truth, Ed, I don't know that much about him. H have you seen him play? Oh, wait, the, the UCF? UCF? The, the, the Maryland uh, now starting quarterback. Oh, Krim Hill. No, he's only been in one game. Mm -hmm. So I think he had a couple throws against Texas. Their starter got hurt, um, and then he came in, and you know he was fine against an FCS opponent, but I don't think that really translates much. Um, but I, I do feel like there's a different feel to this Maryland team. And, you know, you could kind of sense that last year. And it really didn't even show up in the numbers. They were actually worse last year than they were the year before that DJ Durkin got there. But something was definitely different with that program. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go with, with what my numbers say. Take the three in the hook with the UCF Knights on the road. Looks like you're going with Maryland minus three and a half. That's right, Ed, right? I, okay. Yeah. So we're going against each other on that one. Hey, we got 309, 310, two North Carolina teams. Wake traveling to Boone, North Carolina to take on App State. Looks like we got minus five and a half at Penny for Wake, minus four at Just Bet, 48 the total. Looks like you can catch a 48 and a half right now on SBR odds at Heritage. Ed, which way are you looking to bet this one? Yeah, I'm looking at App State, and this goes directly. I, I feel like we don't want to make too much of one bad game that they had at Texas State. They clearly didn't play well at that game. Um, but I don't think that kind of, you know, it's just one game. And I don't want to make too much of that. Um, I still feel like App State is, is one of the best teams in the Sun Belt. They're going to be pushing an FBS average team in my numbers all year. And, and the way I calculate that is I take margin of victory in games and adjust for strength of schedule with, with my algorithms. Um, and, and in fact, those algorithms put both these teams near FBS average. In fact, Wake was able to, to be above FBS average for the first uh, time in a number of seasons last year. And so the team is probably on the rise, but I, you know, Wake doesn't really scare me. Um, the offense was terrible last year. They're bringing back the same quarterback in John Wolford. Just kind of really doesn't scare you against a pretty good App State defense. And the Wake's defense was pretty good last year, but they, but they lost some talent on that side of the ball. So I think both of these are, you know, I think Wake's probably a little bit better team than App State, but the fact that this game is in Boone uh, tips mute towards taking the side for App State. All right. What I about you, that, Drew? Yeah, I, I just think that App State team, they didn't look the same. I know it was on the road coming back now against kind of like, I guess you could say a, a little bit of a rivalry from the same state. So I don't know. I just think Wake, you know, Ian Cameron brought up a good point since uh, I guess that Yahoo was giving out the plays to their opponents. What was that last year or so? It's kind it of like, two years. Has it been two years? Damn. Um, I think so. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't use that in the handicap. I don't know, man. I, I haven't bet this game yet, but um, I, I'm looking towards the wake side, but I, I guess I'll just, I'll use this one as my pass, if that's okay with you. We're going to do four games yeah, instead absolutely. of three, um, but it sounds like you're, you're going with the uh, Mountaineers at home. I'm, I'm going to go with the Mountaineers at home. And, and Drew, I actually want to tell you about the best thing that's happened to me this week. Um, I don't know if you remember down at Costa Rica and the IFBC, I brought these, uh, blue envelopes with a, with a letter in it. Yeah. Um, and I actually put that online this week and it's about the reason that you can't avoid the, the curse of small sample size. And the story is like, we, as humans, we're geared to see patterns and that's fine usually because it leads to all this beautiful mathematics and technology and, and things like that, you know. Um, but it really gets us in trouble when we're looking at randomness, when we're looking at a small sample size of games. Um, so I think a lot of what I've been talking about on the show the last couple of weeks is just, you know, let's not make too much of a small si sample size of games. And, uh, oh, and the best thing that's happened is uh, a lot of people have been picking up on that article the last couple of days. If you want to check it out, just go, uh, go to Twitter. I'm at the power rank. It's pinned to my profile page. Um, and... Uh, I think it can help a lot of people out and kind of understanding the biases that we have in in looking at these games. Small sample size. It's all in the numbers, Ed. So uh, no, great thing to well, check no, out. But for so, sure. Actually, one thing, this is this is really not a numbers piece. I mean, it's it there's there's more about kind of brain science in there than any kind of analytics. Uh, and it's just something that's kind of fascinated me about just how we perceive randomness because there's a lot of randomness in football. Um, so uh, you know, just definitely something, you know, when we're in week 10, week 11, going into these conference championship games, this stuff is a little bit less important. But right now, especially when we're getting to the late end of September, definitely something to think about. Yeah, the ball's not round for sure. Hey, 343-344, Georgia State, Charlotte, a little bit of a degenerate special here. We got Georgia State, <laughs> open minus three, down to pick them. So, uh, Looks like looks like there's some 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 monies. The market is definitely moving this one for sure. It looks like you can get Charlotte plus one at Jazz, fifty one and a half the total at Chris. Looks like fifty one pretty much across the board on SBR odds right now. Ed, you going with the Panthers in this one? I'm guessing. Yeah, I like Georgia State, uh, and let me tell you why. I mean, my numbers take uh, margin of victory and, and adjust for strength of schedule, and. You know, we can't really make too much of these teams from this year. They've both gotten blown out at Power 5 opponents. They have both lost to FCS opponents. And, and that looks 
bad for both teams. But I, I tend to wait kind of what we saw coming into the season. And in Charlotte, I saw a team that was bad on both sides of the ball. And with Georgia State, I saw a team that had a pretty good defense last year. They were 40th in my defense rankings, which are adjusted yards per play. They bring back a lot of those guys on that team this year. And I know they didn't look the part at Penn State last week. I know they lost to an FCC, FCS opponent. But I still think that unit tips the, the scales in this game against in a game of probably two pretty bad teams. Yeah, no, no doubt they're not good teams. I've lost on Charlotte before. I'm going back to the well. Hopefully get a W with All the right. 49ers. Yeah, I'll take the plus one at Jazz. I like their dual threat quarterback, Hassan Clue. And I, I want to be very clear, this is not a big bet for me. But um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on the 49ers nonetheless. Hey, we got one more here. Ed, 363-364, Hawaii, Wyoming. Interesting matchup. We got a, kind of a tricky handicap here. Some injuries involved as well, like we were talking about before. Looks like Wyoming minus six at Penny, minus six and a half pretty much everywhere else. 57 and a half the total across the board. Any thoughts on this one from your numbers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that total jumped out at me. Uh, I, wanted, I really wanted to like the over in this game. Uh, there are two pretty bad defenses and two pretty potent offenses. Uh, Hawaii has actually looked pretty good. Uh, we talked about this, uh, I think, last week's show where, you know, Hawaii wasn't able to cover against UCLA, but they moved the ball. They were able to get yards against probably not a great UCLA defense, but probably UCLA defense that be that's better than this Wyoming defense. Uh, but then, uh, you know, there's questions about quarterback Josh Allen for Wyoming. And, you know, he's really the engine that drives that offense. He's able to, to make these big plays, might even be a first round NFL draft pick. I don't know if I necessarily see that. But he, he was listed as probable, and I looked it up a little bit more. I think he, you know, he injured his shoulder against Iowa. Hasn't particularly looked good this season. Um, you know, if a guy's just listed as probable and he's got an ankle or something, you know, that's one thing. But if a guy banged up his shoulder a couple weeks ago and really hasn't looked the part since then, and he certainly didn't look the part uh, against Oregon last week. I think they, were, they had less than two yards of an attempt through the air. That makes me worry a little bit. That makes me worry a little bit. Um, I did like the over. Going to pass on the game because of the injury. No, you bring up a great, great point, Ed, and it's something that worries me as well. I just noticed that the Hawaii defense is pretty horrific, especially against like UMass earlier on in the season. UMass was able to throw the ball on them a lot. So the injury does scare me, but I, I still think this 57 and a half is short, man. I think that, uh, you know, Wyoming should be able to put up points, it, hopefully. But it, you're right. If the injury is too much, it... Uh, it, it could be a big problem for them moving the ball. I didn't bet this one big either, but I, I did bet it, and I am on the over, so 57 and a half. Right. I'm going with the over on the record for man versus machine. Looks like you're going to pass on this one, though. I'm going to pass. I would definitely lean towards the over. Um, do you have an opinion on the side? Um, I like the rainbows, man, but I, I haven't bet it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so my numbers uh, put it right at about six. And so these numbers come from taking margin of victory and adjusting for strength of schedule. Uh, I think that's particularly important in these kinds of g games where you have teams from different conferences. Um, so it's also, you know, considering uh, data from last year as well. Okay. But essentially, when I say I have a number, it means margin of victory adjusted for strength of schedule, unless I say otherwise. It kind of puts this right on where the market is. I would definitely kind of lean towards Hawaii, too, on the side. Um, you know, if... Uh, yeah, given the quarterback injury, I think I could definitely lean towards Hawaii on the side. Um, having something I've not something I've talked myself into yet, though. Okay, and Ed, um, as far as like when you're making your numbers, your machine, if you will, do you notice that you have more accuracy as the season goes on, or would you say it's more accurate in the college football season earlier on? It, it usually tends to be pretty uniform. Uh, I I look at it of uh, you know how the spread differs from what my prediction is. It tends to be about the same early uh, to late season, but the markets are about the same early to late season, which I actually found a little surprising. I thought it'd be a little bit worse uh, towards the beginning of the season. Yeah, um, we, so we, we do get more volatility, especially in the, in the totals market in the beginning of the season, at least in the last couple of years, that's what I've noticed. Yeah, for sure. But I've also seen some crazy total moves late in the season, too. So I, I don't want to just pin it, um, you know, early season. 
so yeah, actually, I can dig into some of those numbers. Uh, I did the analysis in the off season. Happy to share that with you guys next week if if people are interested. Leave us a comment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Find let us, us know what, what what you want to see on the show and and Ed, anything else, man? You want to you want to get after before we we close it out? Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, you know, I I'm, I'm pretty excited about some games this week. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be doing the show with you. I'm just looking forward to watching some uh, college football this weekend. What about you, Drew? Um, I'm excited. I'm back in Costa Rica and uh, it's kind of been a whirlwind with the hurricane back home, but um, right. you know, ready to just kind of dig in on Saturday and really go to town. Sunbelt, Conference USA, Mac, just that, you know, look at the ESPN three slate a lot there that we'll be able to take into the next week and really bounce on those uh, openers, mostly at Bet Online, but also Five Dimes and Chris right behind them. So I, I, I'm excited to get after it this weekend. Saturday is going to be a big day for me. Nice. Yeah, but uh, this is Man vs. Machine. Find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. Thanks, Ed, and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll, we'll be filming on Wednesday. It will be produced by Thursday morning. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.